Um, hi, we're from the Google Fonts team, and today we'd like to share some updates on our variable font efforts. And I'm Irene, I'm a visual designer on the Google Fonts team. And I'm Nate, I'm one of the software engineers on the Fonts team. Uh, we certainly aren't the only ones uh, that have been grappling with variable fonts, uh, but we face some interesting problems trying to take theory into practice, and uh, we'll be discussing challenges we've been facing, the results and wins we've had, and uh, some digital specimens for variable fonts, and in the end, we have some news to share about our API as well. First, some background information. So for some context, Google Fonts aims to make typography fast, easy, and open. Uh, there's a strong argument that VF can make things faster, uh, but there's some nuance there that we'll dive deeper into later. And then there's easy. Uh, admittedly, VF is proving quite challenging for us in this regard, and we'll speak more to this point as well. VF redeems itself, however, in making type more open. Uh, for our engineering team, it offers opportunities to invest further in open source tooling like font tools and Harfuzz to the benefit of the font industry at large. And so the vast, vast majority of us are here uh, are familiar with variable fonts on some level, but what do they really represent and what sort of value do they offer? As many of us have come to learn, VF is really just about dancing lizards and running horses and growing grass and bicyclists, animating type, right? Uh, you're likely familiar with these fun demos from uh, Type Network and Access Praxis. Uh, while VF does enable these sorts of applications, it's so much more. So variable fonts are like a big cake and there's enough for everybody. Uh, they offer compression of an entire static font family into one smaller file. Uh, they unlock unprecedented design flexibility and expression. Uh, and they also enable new approaches, beautiful new approaches to interface and type design. But all of those benefits do not come for free. For those who aren't familiar with Google Fonts, our API operates as a CDN or content delivery network. And we have a large repository of fonts, the, ma the vast majority of which are static font families, or families in which each font has a set uh, appearance and style. And though we were excited to add VF uh, offerings to our catalog, we couldn't help thinking about the families that uh, were already in our collection, the static font families. We wanted to bring the benefits of VF to those families as well, especially those that already saw high usage, such as Roboto and Open Sans. So as Jason uh, foreshadowed this morning, <laughs> we actually did manage to do this with Oswald, one of our top families. And as a result, many Oswald integrations got faster, and the, the site owners didn't have to do a single thing. Uh, upgrading Oswald transparently like this, though, was difficult. When upgrading a family to VF, the first, uh, the first hurdle you encounter is point compatibility. right? And since we wanted to upgrade families in place, uh, we had very little room for metric changes. This is further complicated by hinting. And as we discovered, hinting, hinting technology hasn't quite caught up with variable fonts yet. Uh, for example, TTF auto hint has, uh, does not yet fully support variable. And while we have been able to generate uh, hinted VFs, they just aren't of the same quality as the static counterparts. Uh, consequently, as we wait for hinting technology to catch up to variable fonts, uh, we must, we've had to continue sending uh, static instances whenever the client required hints. And so it's easy to forget how much more complex variable fonts are when you're working with fonts every day and attending annual type conferences. We want variable fonts to be more than just an expert feature, and VF should be accessible to the masses. Uh, that goes back to our goal of being easy and open, making good typography available to everybody. Uh, but it turns out that VF is difficult to understand, and it's pretty easy to understand why. Most people can wrap their heads around a single axis, and some can even confidently navigate a three-axis design space. Uh, but as you add more and more axes, navigating the hyperdimensional design space of the font becomes quite daunting. Uh, this steep learning curve has remained consistent throughout the various UXR studies that we have conducted in pursuit of a viable means of exposing VF to the masses. And we're still working to develop an approach that introduces VF to developers and designers at scale, which mellows the complexities while still getting people excited about all that VF has to offer. Browser support has also been a challenge. 85% <laughs> of browsers today fully uh, support VF, but that leaves a sizable 15% uh, 
that lack VF support. And that's too many to ignore. Consider this request for a variable font with a weight axis 400 to 700. If we just send VF to a browser that does not support VF, uh, it will oftentimes break the layout and go against design intentions by just going to the default outline of that font. We had hoped that we could just send the named instances within that access range and the browser would uh, intelligently snap to the nearest recognized weight position. So if you requested, uh, or if you wanted to use weight 451, it would use the medium weight. However, this does not work. <laughs> uh, the browser still gets confused and falls back to the default outline. Site owners can work around this, however, using at supports uh, as a gatekeeper for CSS containing VF logic. For example, you can define a CSS class for uh, setting font weight to 451, uh, but by default, have it set the font weight to 500. And so then if at supports determines that the browser does indeed support variable fonts, then the class can be overridden to actually set font weight to 451. We're actively exploring ways to take some of this burden away from font developer, uh, excuse me, web designers and developers. But this issue, this issue of legacy browser support remains an open problem. Uh, nevertheless, in time, we hope that this 15% number will drop, and hopefully it will reach the point that we can eventually ignore uh, this lack of VF support in good conscience. <laughs> All right, let's, let's dive into a few numbers now. Bear with me. <laughs> uh, the purported byte savings of VF are reality, but as we mentioned before, the compression is nuanced. The impact of adding a variable font axis can vary heavily depending on the font and how many axes are already present. We analyzed a selection of open source variable fonts, each of which had some combination of weight, width, and optical size axes. Uh, let's focus on optical size for now. As you can see, the file size impact of an optical size axis ranged drastically. In one case, the file size quadrupled, while in another it only increased by about 25%. Now, bringing back weight and width, you can see similar variance in the file size impact of adding those axes. Uh, variance aside, though, uh, we noticed a trend where adding an axis added, in a, uh, added approximately, uh, it approximately doubled the file size. And the main thing to notice, though, is that combining instances into a single VF is not necessarily going to give you a favorable file size trade-off. It depends how many styles are being used. Uh, now, here you see a visual breakdown of the percent of font traffic that is variable on Chrome, partitioned by device type. There has been a slow and steady rise, uh, but in particular, we'd like to point out this little jump here uh, around the beginning of June, and that's actually when we released Oswald VF, which is pretty exciting. We can't answer every Oswald request with VF due to browser support and unacceptable response size trade-offs like we discussed before, but even after all that and caching, we're still serving up Oswald VF axes and all 148 million times a day. <laughs> and one other exciting thing we'd like to share is that the, uh, we've noticed a rise in VF awareness. In a survey that we've conducted on fonts.google.com, we asked users if they had heard of variable fonts. And in June of last year, 20% of respondents claimed to be familiar with the term. Though some might have limited understanding of what variable fonts actually are. We re-ran that same survey in July of 2019, and we were very happy to see that the number had risen to 36%. Uh, and so while all of us in the type industry are moving in the right direction, we still have a ways to go. Uh, thank you, Nate. I'm gonna, I'm gonna talk about the Google Fonts Digital Specimens Program and Variable Fonts. Before I jump into the very fresh variable fonts digital specimen, I'd like to talk about some of the apps first. So typography has always been changing with te technology, and whenever font technology is developed, as we both designers and developers have been facing challenges and responsibilities to suggest how users can read text better with it. And variable font technology has given us an opportunity to, get see, to, uh, to see how type design can move into the future and help users engage in better typographic design. That is to say, we wanted to see how variable fonts could be meaningful by making reading more pleasant. And Compress, Express, 
finesse are what we think are important for meaningful typography with variable fonts. So um, let's focus on express and finesse. And as Nate mentioned, expression is about unlocking unprecedented design flexibility and expression. And finesse speaks to the new design subtleties made possibly by VF. And we wanted to see how variable fonts can be useful and beautiful. And we've been working hard on VF projects that can demonstrate each of these points of impact. Some font projects we've worked on for Express include the Cover, Recursive, and Francis. These fonts have decorative axes designed for eye-catching headlines that can be used to draw the reader's attention to the text. So the Cover was our first pilot project to make variable fonts meaningful. It was started to demonstrate the power of, power of variable font technology. And it is a decorative sensitive display font designed by David Below. The cover packs tens of thousands of design possibilities into just one single font file. And it contains three skeletal axes to control the shape of the cover's stems and headlines, and seven terminal axes for the shapes of the endings from rounded corners to the slab serves. The most interesting aspect is that they can be blended together. So this the cover project shows how VF axes make fonts more expressive and empower users to express themselves through typography in different ways. And this is recursive, designed by Stephen Nixon from Aerotype. Is Stephen here? <laughs> and it's a type family that maximizes fun and utility for code and design, and provides a continuous range of design control axes with five axes, including proportion, expression, weight, italic, and cursive. And to provide the most value in different um, contexts, the expression axis provides a spectrum of personality. And Francis is a display old style soft serif typeface designed by Charles and Thorne. It's uh, uh, composed of Roman and Italic, and it has three different axes, including optical size, weight, and goofy. And the goofy axis gives access to the chocolatey, chunky forms, and it can be used for both subtle and bold headlines. Fonts we worked on for fairness are to make reading more pleasant by providing access like optical size and a parametric access system, which help to make text more legible. So Francis, which I just showed you, also aligns with finesse by having an optical size axis. The optical size axis in Francis ties together changes in contrast, excite, spacing, and character width. As the optical size decreases, the excite increases, and spacing opens up, and the characters stretch slightly. This is what makes typography meaningful, especially for better text legibility. The other project that Google Fonts commissioned from David Bolo in 2016, alongside the cover project, was this serif text font, Ansovar. The reason we find it exciting um, is that David is using blending as a powerful new approach for text typography. And the final typeface I want to show you today is Roboto Extremo. And it's another parallel project by FontBrew and Type Network to upgrade Roboto into a parametric variable font like Amsterbar. With parametric access, our UI font's key features, large XI, generous letter spacing, and wide characters can be more flexible and expressive in a wide variety of design contexts, especially for the purpose of increasing the quality of typography in users' interfaces. And this project shows how an existing typeface can be better with VF technology and parametric access. With these VF projects, we experimented and demonstrated how VF technology can make typography meaningful. And as Nate mentioned earlier, we conducted a survey of VF awareness among our users. The results showed that the most of our users hadn't heard of VF, so our next challenge with VF is how we can introduce VF technology to our users and teach them to design effectively with new tools. And there are two categories in which we, we wanted to figure out the best way to educate users on variable fonts. The first one is terminology, how users would understand terminology around VF, such as variable and access. And the second one is that we also needed to find the right way for users to learn about the design spaces inside variable fonts. Traditional static fonts come with only a few styles, but with a variable font, there is a concept of a design space created by one or more axes, offering a vast number of design choices. And we believe users can make good typography by understanding these unlimited design possibilities if we, just, if we showcase the design space in the right way. 
And in recent years, Google Fonts has commissioned digital specimens for some font projects. We have worked with designers and developers, and each specimen is designed and built as a website that is free, Libra, and open source on GitHub, like other Google Fonts font projects. So everyone can contribute to it. And these specimens are about not just one typeface story, but groups of fonts based on bigger cultural categories sometimes. And with this uh, digital specimen, we wanted to show, um, we wanted to see how variable font can change the perspective of traditional typography and help users to see broader possibilities of recursive variable fonts. And this is a recursive digital specimen, which was our first digital specimen for variable fonts. And uh, in this digital specimen, we wanted to show off the available design space of recursive. So the cube is composed with three different axes from recursive, and it leads users to explore and experience the actual space by interacting with this recursive cube. The site itself is designed as a code editor, and users can intuitively experience and understand the power of VF on the web and the flexibility, flexibility of web typography. Um, Uh, the first section focuses on definition and information around VF. We try to communicate with users from fundamental terminology, such as VF, and each access to practical usages on web. Unlike with static fonts, users can have lots of stylistic choices with a variety of access, and it was important for us to inform on these unique features of recursive variable font through the specimen site. So the site details each axis and provides interactive tools to learn more about the font specifics. This slider shows details of how the letter font changes within the expression axis. And again, we wanted to focus on, what, what we wanted to focus on here are contents, examples, and tools to evoke users' imagination and curiosity on VF. So horizontal sliders have been used a lot to control um, axis, but having various interactions beyond sliders can inspire users on VF usages. So we try to provide different ways that users can explore access by providing various controls. So this vertical um, slider is for the express access, and as you grab text and move it around, you can easily get the idea of how the access works and how you can control the design within the range of the access. We, we also wanted to open the question of how VF would be used in various contexts. So this dollar sign canvas enables you to draw anything with the sign um, in the weight axis. One other thing we did in this site is that we built a fixed toolbar that enables you to modify the variable font settings of the contents. And with these approaches, we aim not to limit the possibilities of VF, instead opening opportunities for VF to users. And all the VFs I just shared are open source, and we encourage you to explore the fonts. And digital specimens with VFs are only the beginning. So as a part of the long journey of making variable fonts meaningful, we wanted to provide context of VF uh, to users so that they can join our journey to evolve the future of VF by understanding the mechanism of it. And recursive.design is a link to the digital specimen site. And there's a type tester and beta fonts available today. And we will be releasing the full site soon, so please stay tuned. Now I'll hand back to Nate for a special final announcement. Yeah, so, uh, so we're opening up a new VFWare API, uh, which is not yet integrated with our catalog, but is available for web developers to experiment with, uh, and designers for that matter. <laughs> uh, here's a link to a code pen where you can learn more. Uh, tweet us at Google Fonts, our DMs are open, and feedback is always welcome. Uh, yeah. Thank you all for listening. Appreciate it.